Solo Repository is possibly the most technically complex solo this game has ever seen. This video is meant to serve as both a guide and explanation of the strategies used in the run, in addition to showcasing the multiple out-of-bounds routes that are used during it. I'll be using the Snazzy Rocks Clear, or Dabs as I'm going to call them, as a basis for the strats discussed here. Thanks to the fact that most of the solo takes place without any time constraints, it is possible on all three characters, but of course the movement aspects will be a little different. Since Dabs did clear on Hunter, since it is the easiest thanks to its movement and ad clear capabilities, that is what I'm going to be discussing for the rest of the video and what I'll be assuming you'll be running if you're going to do it yourself. I hope this video helps if you're looking to run the solo or if you just want to understand what's actually happening in the run, because in my opinion this is one of the coolest solos we've gotten in a while and I'm really happy that it exists. The first step of the run is actually just to die, and this is necessary in order for the death warp that we're going to do later on to actually work but I'll explain why that is specifically in a little bit. Just know that when you start your run, the first step is just to die. And I really would recommend using the call to do this because it's the best weapon to death warp with, which we're going to need to do in a sec, like I mentioned. So once you've done that, pick up the resonance and come stand right in front of the box. The first actual step here is to skate out of the door as soon as we deposit this resonance, but there is a joining allies that exists outside of the door for the first eight or nine seconds after encounter start. So we're gonna need to wait about a second and a half to do the shatter skate uh, or else we'll get caught by the joining allies. So I'm gonna deposit the resonance, wait about a second and then shatter skate out the door. And you'll see this joining allies will barely not catch me. Yep, there it goes. So here's where we're gonna break the timer if we go to the previous load zone, as soon as the wipe goes off, the wave will go off, but it won't actually catch us because we're not in its load zone anymore. So for some reason, this doesn't just hard wipe you, it just lets you go back to the encounter with no timer. So I will see you when that happens. So I've got 10 seconds left on the timer. Uh, the wave is about to come towards me. You can see the next load zone trigger is right here, or the previous load zone trigger. You could hit it right now if you want to, but I'm just gonna show that the wave is gonna come towards me. And as it does, I'm just gonna step into war. And I stepped into it a little too early there. I wanted to show you the wave coming towards me, but either way, the wave just passed through in repository, but since I'm in Warren, it doesn't kill me. And like I said, for some reason, it's not a hard wipe. But if we come back into repository, you'll see the timer is now gone. However, the door to the first room is closed. So in order to get past it, we're going to need to do uh, what's called a death warp, which is why we had to kill ourselves at the very beginning. So a death warp is where you die in a non-restricted load zone or a load zone that you can respawn in, such as the one I'm in right now. And as you die, you move into a restricted load zone, such as repository, and you do it such that the, you, you trick the game into thinking that you died in the non-restricted load zone, but that your spawn point is in the restricted load zone. So it allows you to respawn at the default spawn of the restricted load zone, which for us is inside of the first room. So what that all means in practice is you need to come up exactly one step away from the load zone and kill yourself as you step into it so that you can basically just shoot yourself and then tap A and you're in the load zone and you die and that'll let you get it. So. <clears throat> This part is very precise and it, I would recommend just finding your own lineup here. I know that me and Dabs use our own lineups here. I've talked to a diff couple other different people that use their own lineups. It's just much easier when people have different graphics settings and stuff. So I'm not going to harp on my lineup too much for this, but just know that you want to come up, like I said, exactly one step away from the load zone. So for me, I just kind of line myself up on these textures on the wall here. Um, the load zone is right about here on the floor i'm just going to let myself kind of step over into it and you can see there it is there's repository so like i said just come up and play with that area yourself until you find a, something you're comfortable with lining up off of you can go in between these two load zones as many times as you want it's only once you kill yourself and step into a repository that you've kind of locked yourself into that try so i'm just going to come up to the wall i'm just going to make sure my cursor is in the center here and then just kind of start inching to the left until my cursor is right in between these kind of two dark lines right here. Okay, so that looks good. And then once I've done this, I'm going to lock my frames to 30. This is very important for this trick. If you're on a console, 60 will do fine. But if you're on a PC, always lock to 30 here. Uh, this trick is infinitely harder on, the, on higher frames. So like I said, always lock to 30. But once you're lined up, just shoot yourself three times. And then on the fourth shot, tap A. And if you do it right, you should load into repository right as you die and get the wipe timer. Start spamming respawn, and you can respawn inside of the room and begin doing the first room. 
So as far as clearing the rooms go in this solo, there's nothing too mechanically complex going on. It's pretty much what you'd expect it to be. You spawn in, you kill the tormentors, and then you can start sending and receiving charges. However, some of the lines to make it from the home plate to the totem plate are a bit challenging, so I will show them all off here. And additionally, there's something that is going on during this phase that may not be immediately apparent, and that's that when you finish a side, that side's symbols despawn. So let's say for an example here, left is circle, and in the first room, squares spawn on left. So as soon as you lock in that left totem, the squares are going to despawn. And if you don't pick up a square before it despawns, you won't be able to finish the square side. So you have a couple seconds from the moment you lock in the totem to pick up that side symbol. And if you don't do that, it's just a wipe. You cannot get that symbol back in any way. And you need to do that for the first two totems in each room. So you really want to make use of your infinite time here by setting yourself up perfectly to start picking up symbols before you pick up any. Because of course, the only way to get rid of all of your resonance is to either dunk it or die. So until you are ready to lock in all three totems, do not pick up any because that is the only part of this run that actually has a time crunch. Um, but once you've done that and you're ready to go, lock in all three totems, kill the unstop, and you're good to move on to the next part. Once you've cleared the first room and you're in the hallway going to the second room, do not enter the room itself. So the reason for this is that when you enter the second room under these conditions, I think the game checks and sees that the timer is gone and it immediately plays a wipe. So if we don't hit this trigger from out of bounds, there's no way for us to survive it. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go hit this out of bounds and switch load zones just like we did at the beginning to survive the wave. So once you're here, just come up to the top of the staircase and turn around. And you'll notice this very nice hole in the ceiling that we're going to use to go out of bounds. So the first thing to note here is as soon as you're out, lock to 30 FPS. This is because we're going to hit the Verity load zone in a second, and being at 30 FPS makes it very unlikely to die to that load zone. If you do die, it's not the end of the world. You just spawn at the start of fourth encounter, which you have to climb all the way back up the hole, and it's kind of annoying. So the second thing to note is that this area out here is very dangerous. It's riddled with turnbacks and death barriers, and it's very, very easy to die. So you want to be careful to follow the exact route that I take here. So the first thing is just to come out to the end, edge of this platform, take out your sword, and do an eager without jumping onto this brown part of the tree. And then just another sword swing onto this blue part. So the first thing to note here is that every area, essentially, on the left of this gray line basically where I'm circling right now, is instant death. So you can cross over this line right here, but you'll notice it's pretty slippery, and the kill floor here is right at the end of the tree. So you basically never want to cross over this gray line onto the left side. But once you're here, just run up the tree until you pass this dark spot, and this right here is where the wipe would happen if I was in an actual run. So this is a clip from Dabs is Clear. You'll see right as he swords onto the tree and onto this blue part where we are right now, he's going to walk up the side, and then you'll see in the bottom left, the altar hungers for your offering, and you'll notice his screen just got orange, so the wipe in second room is now coming towards him, and he's just going to hit the Verity load to avoid it. So once I'm here, I'm just going to double jump up, and I'm going to hit the Verity load zone, and then unlock my frames. At this point, the goal is to get back into the map to continue doing the second room, or to start doing the second room, I should say. And in order to do that, we're just going to use the same hole we used to get out. So just backtrack here until we hit the repository load zone. This is where the third room ends right here. And then we're just going to turn around and go up onto this tree. Go up onto this little nub and then crouch through into the middle of the tree. Once we're here, just hang a left drop through this hole and immediately eager out onto this box this is another moment where the kill floor is right next to where we're trying to go so i'm just gonna drop off here you'll see i die almost immediately so you don't really have any room to go any lower than this box when you're getting over here but once you're here just drop up or sorry jump up onto the ring come to the tree and then eager off onto this box in the corner wait for your turn back to reset jump up eager to the left and then fall down onto this orange box right here. This is an area where it's very easy to hit the Verity load zone if you don't follow that exact path, and sometimes you'll just die to it. So, once again, be very careful. Drop off onto the tree, 
Make sure you don't go onto the left side of the gray line. And then there's a couple ways to do this next part, but I find the easiest, at least on Hunter, to just be double jumping over to the corner. Pretty hard to mess that up. Um, but you'll notice if I walk off once again, I die pretty much immediately. So if you are going to eager that, just be very careful that you don't accidentally go out too far to the right. But once you're here, you just jump up through this hole and you can start doing the second room as normal. So the second room is much the same as the first room. The only difference here is that the lines between the plates are quite a bit harder on each side. In Dabs is Clear, he uses Lumina Grapples to make some of them, and that's what I'm going to show here since Dabs is Clear is what I'm using, uh, basing this guide off of. However, it's not strictly necessary. Some of them can be made with Shatter Skates or Well Skates, but you're just going to have to play around with that if you don't want a Lumina Grapple. The only other difference in this room is that the symbol spawns are a little bit different, so I'll go ahead and put that on screen again when I show the lines. But after we look at the lines, there's nothing else to really go over in this room. We're just going to move on to the next part. So once you've cleared the second room and this door is open, do not progress into the next hallway. So just like the second room, the third room has a wipe that will trigger as soon as you enter the room, but I believe it can be triggered by certain places in the hallway, so just don't go in there. Instead, just turn around and come back to the same hole that we used earlier to get an in and out of the map. And we're going to use that to do the same thing we did earlier where we trigger the wipe from out of the map and then we immediately hit Verdi. So once again, lock frames to 30, come to the edge of this platform and eager down to the tree and then onto the blue part and then run up past the dark spot and once again if i was in a real run this is where the wipe would trigger so i'm just going to jump up and hit verity and then unlock my frames so once again we need to get back into the map but unfortunately if we use that same hole we just used the door from the second room to the third room is closed so we're going to need to get back into the third room directly which is unfortunately quite a bit harder than just getting into the second room uh, but to start, just come back up the tree trunk, use the same hole we've been using to get out of the map, and we're just going to go back to that same general area we've been going to. Once you drop down onto this orange box, instead of dropping down onto the tree, just turn around and jump up onto these black rectangles, and then again onto the roof we just came from. Once you're up here, just hang a right into this alcove, and you're safe from turn back. If you have high moby, you can just jump right up to this platform. You may need a mountaintop jump if not, but either way, just jump up onto the roof and run forward and to the left until your turn back resets. So up here on the other side of these trees over here is the third room and that's where we're trying to go to. You notice obviously this whole area is turned back so we're going to need to do it pretty fast. Uh, but I just want to point out really quick that if you look at this tree, you'll notice this little nub on the tree right here that I'm going to surround in red. And the wall ends right over here obviously. So it's possible to slide in past this nub on both the right and left side of it, you see this gap right here. However, the right side is completely covered by a death barrier. So when you come up to this nub, you need to slide in on the left side. And you'll see me do that in a sec, but I just really wanted to point that out because it's very important for this part. Also worth mentioning that jumping is just instant death here. So once you're ready, make sure you have a mountaintop with sticky nades, any weapon with explosive payload to manually trigger the detonation, and some kinetic loaders can help just because it speeds up the process. So just come to the edge of the turn back and then place four mountaintops right in front of you. So two, three, four, shoot the weapon, eager towards the tree, slide in on the left, and then pull out eager again. As you can see, that was pretty tight. That's definitely the hardest individually individual part of the solo, but uh, I haven't missed it in a while just doing these uh, this guide video. So I, it's pretty easy after you actually nail the uh, strategy. I would just definitely practice this part a lot before you do real runs because this will be very annoying to mess up once you're 30 minutes in. But once you're here, you're good to just do the third room and finish it out. 
So once again, the only difference between the previous room and this room is that the lines in this room are quite a bit harder than both of the previous ones. So I'm gonna show those off on screen in a second, but like I said, it's just the same thing for this room that you've been doing. Just take it very slow and be very ready to pick up your symbols because the lines in this room are the hardest of the three and it's very easy to mess up under nerves once you've been in this encounter for like 30, 40 minutes. But once you've locked in all three of the totems, just be very, very careful. Dying at that part would be absolutely heartbreaking. Just finish out the run nice and slow. So if you've made it this far, thank you. I hope you found this run as interesting as I do. And if you're going for a clear, hopefully this helps you navigate a little easier. If you have any specific questions or if you want to read the additional text version of the guide, or if you want to read guides for any other solo encounters, join the D2 Solo Raids Discord and ask around. It's an extremely welcoming and helpful place. But uh, that's all I got. So thanks for watching and good luck.